What does a monster look like to you? What figures slither and claw their way into your nightmares, chasing you down endless halls and stalking you through the dark until you wake up screaming? Maybe you imagine something tall and lean, bony arms reaching for you from atop impossibly long, slender legs, its featureless face showing no mercy. Maybe you think of a man in a striped sweater with knives for fingers, or a serial killer in a hockey mask wielding a machete. Maybe it's something more inhuman, a cosmic horror of tentacles and eyes that can see into your very soul. You probably don't think of something with no arms, no legs, no body at all, just a face. What's so scary about that? A face can't run after you, can't grab you by the ankles and pull you under the bed. A face can only look. It may be unsettling to behold, it might send a chill down your spine, but the worst it can do is make you a little uncomfortable. And if you can't stand it any longer, you could always just close your eyes or walk away and be done with it, right? If that's what you think, if you don't believe in monsters that can hurt you without lifting a finger, then you're the type to fall victim to a very special, very intelligent mask. In the hollowed halls of the SCP Foundation, there is a containment cell, outfitted with a hermetically sealed glass case, surrounded by steel, iron, and lead. There are guards posted outside, along with a trained psychologist. If you are ever brave and foolish enough to enter that room, you'll see a simple white porcelain comedy mask with a peculiar black substance leaking from its eyes and mouth. Whatever this slime touches, surfaces begin to corrode, to rot away into puddles of black liquid. You might notice the same liquid trickling slowly down the walls of the room, corrupting everything in its path. As unsettling of a sight as it is, if you approach the mask to take a closer look, you will find yourself overcome by an intense, nearly irresistible urge to pick it up and put it on. To wear it, to let it consume you from the inside out and puppet your body while your brain simply turns off. Like an extinguished flame, you'll simply be gone. Then. Who knows what the mask will do? It won't be your concern anymore, that's for sure. But thankfully, you haven't gone into the room with the porcelain mask. You haven't let it cast its spell on you. Not yet, at least. It's waiting for you there, in the room with black slime oozing down its walls. And it will wait patiently for as long as it needs to. After all, what's a mask without a face to wear it? SCP-035, better known as the Possessive Mask, sat in its containment cell, immobile as always. It didn't really have much of a choice in the matter. The Foundation had chosen, selfishly, to revoke its host privileges. Once upon a time, they offered it bodies to choose from. Mannequins, dummies, and wooden dolls it could adorn and pilot. They didn't last as long as an organic living host, of course, but it was something. It was a taste of freedom. This dreadful new situation was almost enough to make the mask want to change its surroundings. This dreadful new situation was almost enough to make the mask want to change its expression from comedy to tragedy, but it was determined to still find something to laugh about. Even without a body trapped in this infernal box, there had been some delicious opportunities for entertainment. Human minds were fragile things. The mask had learned this over the infinite years of its life, if one could call it a life. Apply the right kind of pressure to the right weak points, whisper an enticing word or two, find the right emotional wound to sprinkle a pinch of salt into, and humans would buckle completely in almost no time at all. It had tried all sorts of methods since being confined to this boring little box. Sometimes it would charm someone, pour honeyed flattery into their heads, until the person felt like the mask was a dear friend, a confidant. Once suitable trust had been built up, the mask could persuade the person to bring it a host, or perhaps even offer up themselves in sacrifice. 
If flattery didn't work, there were other potent approaches to take. For a being without ears, the mask was a good listener. It picked up on things that no human ever could, the darkest secrets buried in a person's mind. If it caught wind of something, especially juicy and ruinous, it could leverage that, threaten to expose an affair, a crime, or perhaps something even worse, something unspeakable. If praise failed, and so did blackmail, there was always good old supernatural intimidation. All the mask needed was for someone to be left alone with it for a long enough period of time. Then, its invisible tendrils could snake out into their defenseless mind, weaving and poking around, leaving a lingering sense of cold, dread, of incomprehensible whispers in long, dead tongues. What a delight containment had been in the early days, when the Foundation had not yet figured out the mask's true capabilities, when they would leave security personnel with weak wills and minimal training standing guard in the mask's field of influence for hours at a time, as the entity played with their thoughts and chipped away at their free will. Thanks to the helpers it had been able to mold out of those hapless victims, they had been there to break open its case and carry it to freedom. But every time, the other guards thwarted the attempts, shooting its helpers and rendering them utterly useless. Then the Foundation increased its security. Something about the unacceptably high homicide rates among staff assigned to SCP-035. How utterly boring. How truly pathetic. Still, the mask had found ways to occupy itself even without any more playthings. It had grown stronger with its boredom, stretching its influence beyond organic beings and into the very room itself, its evil enriching and deepening like a fine wine in the depths of a cold cellar. Over the months, the walls of SCP-035's containment cell had begun to secrete the same black, slimy substance that would pour from the mask's eyes and mouth. The liquid dripped down the walls in deliberate formations, patterns that became increasingly easy to recognize. Phrases in Italian, Latin, Ancient Greek, all detailing ritual sacrifices and mutilations. The mask took time to describe the sacrificial victims in great detail, borrowing identifying traits from various staff members so that it knew would read the translations. The walls were slick with blood and harrowing imagery, and the glass case around the mask was growing more and more fragile by the day. Anyone within 10 meters of the mask could feel this strength too. They would leave the area complaining of unintelligible whispers, of loud, cruel laughter, and a lingering sense of nearly insurmountable despair. It was as if they knew on some level that no one was truly safe. Eventually, the mask would find a way to come for them all. The glass was weakening, and soon the mere thought of escape would make it shatter into pieces. Then, perhaps, the mask could finally get its deepest desire, revenge. It wanted nothing more than to try to make the Foundation pay for imprisoning it, for taking away its host privileges, for trying harder and harder to contain the kind of power that should have had them falling to their knees in worship. The mask seethed with hatred day in and day out. It had seen the crumbling of the Roman Empire, the beheading of kings, the decimation of armies. It was not going to be captured by a bunch of rats in lab coats without dire consequences befalling them. Maybe it couldn't move from its prison cell at the moment, but it also knew that it was surrounded on all sides by dangerous beasts capable of reducing the sight and all who had dared to oppose the mask to a pile of smoldering rubble. If it could only find its way onto one of their faces, it would show them all just what it was capable of. As the piercing sound of an alarm echoed down the hall, the sound of screams and chaos following shortly after, the mask's frowning face curved into a broad, menacing smile. 
What was it that had escaped? The lizard, perhaps? The giant grinning man? Whatever it was, it seemed that the action was heading right towards 035's containment cell. Perhaps today was the day. Finally, the SCP Foundation would fall. Outside the mask cell, security officer Harper was running for dear life. Though his more rational mind knew he was living on seconds, not even minutes, of borrowed time, his animal brain kept his legs pumping, desperately trying to avoid the screaming, howling predator hot on his heels. Harper looked over his shoulder and screamed as a long white arm reached for him. SCP-096, the Shy Guy, its tooth-lined jaw hanging low and foaming with spittle. That face, that terrible, terrible face. An absolute death sentence to all who saw it. He'd seen what he thought was a crack in the otherwise perfect seal of 096's containment chamber, but it could have just as easily been a trick of the light. Not even thinking, he stepped forward and looked at the vulnerability in the chamber. All it took was one misplaced ray of light, and he made out the vague shape of a face in the darkness. That's when the weeping started. Harper knew in that moment his life was over. The correct thing to do would have been to order everyone else in the room to close their eyes while he stood there and accepted his fate, minimizing the risk of spreading the damage further. But humans rarely have perfect reasoning, even less so when facing mortality. Back in the present, the Shy Guy made a perfect lunge, grabbing Harper in its iron clutches and barreling through the adjoining wall. The nearby guards scattered, terrified, keeping their eyes on the floor. They might get a slap on the wrist for temporarily abandoning their posts, but they weren't going to die guarding some stupid, evil mask. Speaking of, the possessive mask was surprised to feel two new presences enter its chamber through the now destroyed wall. These two presences soon became just one, as SCP-096 quickly and totally annihilated Security Officer Harper, leaving nothing left. The mask couldn't see, per se, seeing as it had no actual sensory organs, but it felt around this new guest with its many psychic tendrils taking in this strange totality. The creature was powerful, no doubt about that, and it elicited fear from those fools at the SCP Foundation. But the mask noticed its brainwaves were extraordinarily muted. Humans, to the mask's vast and malicious consciousness, weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but compared to this thing's mind, they were a pile of tempered katanas. It barely thought at all. The mask would have to dig deeper to find anything it could use. Meanwhile, SCP-096 finally began to calm down. The one who had seen it had been annihilated. Bubbling rage was slowly siphoned out and replaced by the standard low but constant hum of anxiety and despair. It would wait until its head was bagged and it was dragged back to the dark. Same old, same old, all the way to the end of time. That's when it felt something else. It started as a faint buzz, an unintelligible whisper, and it was almost like a door opened in the back of its head. Something stepped in and took a seat. Can you hear me, stranger? Look, look, I want to speak. Something about the voice frightened and comforted SCP-096 at the same time. It spoke with a greater degree of sympathy than the creature had heard in a long time. And yet, something about the way it spoke implied evil in its intent. I know what you want. I know what you fear. Wouldn't it be nice? If they could never look at you again, if you could cover that face of yours, I can help you. It would be so simple. All you need to do is put me on. Little by little, 096 felt more of these strange thoughts filling up the emptiness in its head replacing the few little thoughts the creature itself had. It felt itself lifting its hands from the ground, lifting them and reaching towards something, a glass box. The glass shattered, and those long white fingers 
reached for something within. A mask, just like the voice had said. A mask to stop people from looking at its face. Yes, yes, you're doing so well. You're so close, just a little further. SCP-096 lifted the mask to its face, feeling black liquid that burned its skin dripping from the porcelain, and put it on. And in that moment, everything changed. The Shy Guy's body began to seize up, rattling as the mask unleashed a web of psychic tendrils through its body, mapping out across every inch like a new nervous system, taking control. The possessive mask had never experienced a host like this before, that incredible perfect mix of physical durability and a mind so insubstantial that it was easy to sublimate. All this was going to be fun. For the first time, the Shy Guy, now under the full control of the possessive mask, stood at full height on its hind legs, its spine and shoulders clicking into place for its new stance. The mask cracked its neck, getting used to the new dimensions of its physicality, its indestructible bones, its long, grasping limbs, its skin burning and fizzling with the gooey black secretions, but growing back just as quickly. The Foundation had every reason to fear it now. A group of security personnel had gathered in the ragged hole where the chamber's north wall used to be. Some were wielding light firearms. The guard at the front was carrying an opaque black bag. The mask laughed with its new body and turned to the crowd. The second they saw it on 096's body, their faces fell. For a moment, their bodies went slack with terror. This situation was unprecedented. What course of action could they possibly take at a time like this? It looked at the bag held by the leader of the security force and projected a single thought into his mind. You won't be needing that. Before any of the guards even had a chance to open fire, the mask lunged forwards, using the long, terrible arms of the Shy Guy to tear through the guards. They were dead in seconds, their bodies strewn about the hallway. The mask's porcelain was twisted into a wide, sadistic grin. It could tell that it was about to have some real fun around here. And once it slaughtered everyone here, it could finally stretch its legs out in the open again. True freedom to spread misery, fear, and pain everywhere it went. There were just a few hundred members of Foundation personnel it needed to turn into corpses first. More containment breach alarms sounded around the site as the mask began its rampage, running through the hallways and tearing apart any unfortunate Foundation personnel it could get 096's hands on. Guards, researchers, administrative staff, and even one extremely unlucky janitor in Hallway C6. It was having the time of its long and terrible life, and much to its glee, it seemed that this new host's body was still holding up. It was perfect symbiosis, a twisted, brilliant mind, and a body that could forever support it. There would be no stopping it, a conclusion that the hapless guards posted around the site soon realized on their own terms. 096 was indestructible, but it was dumb as a brick and had an easily exploitable weakness. Get the bag on its head and you're home free. This new composite creature was a different story. It could think tactically, avoiding head-on confrontations in favor of sneak attacks, and the monster had as much psychic combat potential as physical. Guards roving the building in teams heavily armed with anti-memetic protective gear still reported feeling immense feelings of psychological dread over comms. That was the greatest sign that the mask would come bursting through the wall moments later and tear them to shreds. The site director put out an urgent call for all nearby mobile task forces to intercept and help them take care of the unfortunate situation. Thankfully, a detachment of MTF-8-10, also known as See No Evil, was operating on a case in close proximity. Given their specialization in anomalies with a mimetic visual property, many on the team had dealt with 096 breaches before. That at least gave them experience in half of this situation, and one operative among them 
Sergeant Henrique Ramirez would be the one to bring this nightmare to an end, but it would cost him his life in the process. The mask was still using its new indestructible body to wreak havoc on the containment site. Once it had taken out the primary contingents of guards, it was free to have its fun with the rest, stalking defenseless researchers through the halls, making sure to induce maximum terror before finally striking the killing blow. Every single one of them died with a head full of demonic whispers. It told them of the mask's eternal dominion. Now it had found the perfect host. Nothing on Earth would stop it. Humans would be mere ants under its feet. Ada-10 touched down and entered the building. Ramirez was point man, leading the others into the bowels of the blood-drenched containment site. They'd been briefed on what they were heading in for. 096 and 035 had reached symbiosis and were displaying unprecedented anomalous effects. Enter with extreme caution. They're beyond dangerous, even more so together than alone. Ideally, Ramirez would have wanted to go in with a comprehensive plan, but lives were on the line here. They needed to leap off the cliff and build their wings on the way down. It was only when they finally encountered the monster that they realized just how outmatched they were. Despite their best efforts, the combined speed, intelligence, and ferocity of the mask's new form allowed it to make short work of Ada-10. Only Ramirez was left, heavily injured. Even if a miracle happened, he knew he wasn't getting out of here alive. The mask grabbed him with one of 096's claws and lifted him up. It would take its time with this one, make him suffer, watch him squirm, destroy his mind. Ramirez felt the mask's psychic tendrils penetrate the membrane of his mind. Those whispers, those terrible whispers reciting all his worst fears with terrible glee. His gun was out of ammo, his knife was broken, all he had left on him was a pocket mirror, and that was his eureka moment. It was a long shot, but it was also his only shot. He reached out and grabbed the bottom of the mask, pulling for dear life. His other hand shot into his pocket and grabbed the mirror, opening its lid with a deft flick of his thumb. It was too fast for the mask to even register what was going on. Ramirez forced his eyes shut and lifted up the mirror. The mask saw its own reflection in the glass as the bottom of its face came loose, revealing the reflection of the face underneath. The mask squeezed, killing Ramirez, but it was already too late. It had finally seen the face of its host, and that would cost it dearly. The mask felt a sudden and tremendous pushback to its psychic forces, a blind despair and then rage that choked out everything. SCP-096 began to sob and howl. Somehow the mask was no longer in control. Despite its psychic protests, 096 reached up and tore the terrible mask from its face, tossing it against the wall with such force that it was embedded in the brickwork. Its last thoughts, as other mobile task force operators descended on the area to bag 096 and return it to its containment chamber were, What the hell just happened? And the next thought that crossed the mind of the site director was, request site transfer for 035 as soon as possible. Don't want a repeat of this incident anytime soon. Now go check out SCP-035 The Possessive Mask and SCP-096 Shy Guy Escape Incident 096-1-A Containment Breach for more videos on today's terrifying combatants.